everybody. Today we're going to talk about a few things that you should consider when you're purchasing hand planes. And to do that, we need to talk about the difference between the two major types of hand planes. We have low angle block planes and high angle planes. We're not going to talk about specialty planes like shoulder planes and scraper planes today. We'll get to those in a future episode. So let's take a closer look. So here we have a typical high angle plane. This happens to be a number seven joiner plane. And here we have a typical low angle plane. This is a number 62 low angle jack plane. On a high angle plane, the plane's blade is bedded at 45 degrees with the bevel facing down. And that's a critical difference between high angle planes and low angle planes. We'll get into that difference in a little bit. On a low angle plane, the blade is actually bedded at about 12 degrees with the bevel facing up. Now let's take apart this plane. You can see on a high angle plane we have a cap iron with a lever that actually locks all of these layers together. We have a blade and chip breaker assembly that is disassembled with this slotted screw here. And finally we have a frog, and that's this entire assembly here that is attached to the sole of the plane. On the frog, there's a lateral adjustment lever, and also there's a thumb screw for adjusting the depth of cut. On a low angle plane, again, you have a cap. This time it's tightened with a thumb screw. And you have a blade, and that's it. So on a high angle plane, you have several more parts than you do on a low angle plane. And this can make setting up a high angle plane to cut properly a little bit more finicky than setting up a low angle plane. But once you get used to it, it only takes a few minutes. To adjust the throat opening on a high angle plane, you actually move the entire frog assembly forward and backward, which advances the blade forward and backward. The farther forward the blade is, the tighter the throat opening becomes. But this distance on the sole between here and here is fixed. So it's controlled completely by the placement of the frog in the bed of the plane here. And that's adjusted with some adjustment screws in the back of the frog. By contrast, on a low angle plane, there's a lever underneath the knob on the front of the plane that controls a movable plate in the sole of the plane. So I can tighten the throat opening with the lever or I can loosen it up for a coarser cut. It's a very quick adjustment and it makes a low angle plane much easier to adjust for a coarse cut and then immediately for a fine cut. Whereas this takes several minutes to adjust. Typically, once you've set up a high angle plane for a certain throat opening, you leave it there for the rest of its life. Now, each one of these plane designs has certain advantages and disadvantages. On a high angle plane, you have additional parts which add additional mass. And that can be useful in certain situations where you need the plane to have a fair amount of authority in the cut. If you're taking a heavy shaving perhaps, or you're actually doing some of your dimensional milling with hand planes instead of a joiner and a planer, sometimes having that extra mass can really help push through the cut. At other times, that extra mass can just wear you out. So it's an advantage, but it's also a possible disadvantage. Another advantage to a high angle plane over a low angle plane is the position of the depth of cut adjuster. You can see here on the low angle plane, it actually sits very low in the body of the plane. And here on the high angle plane, you can see that actually while I'm cutting, I can adjust the depth of cut with my finger. The wheel itself is larger. And while you're pushing through a cut, you can actually adjust the depth of cut in the middle of your pass, which can be very useful. On this plane, there's actually 
no way to do that. I can reach it with my pinky, but the knob is so small, it doesn't offer me enough torque, especially with my pinky here, to actually make any adjustment during the cut. So you have to stop, pick up the plane, make your depth adjustment, try another cut. Usually I do that on a little test piece that I'm sliding underneath, and I get it set up before I ever take it to the workpiece. But on a plane like this, if you decide mid-cut that you actually want a bit, a bit deeper cut, you just swing the depth adjuster forward a little bit and uh, you're there. So ergonomically, the depth adjuster is definitely better on high angle planes. The advantages of a low angle plane get back to this notion of the blade being bedded in the plane with the bevel facing up. On a high angle plane with the bevel facing down, no matter what angle we grind the blade, the wood is going to see the exact same angle of cut. And that means that changing the bevel angle doesn't really change the performance of the plane. It might make your blade's sharpness last longer if you sharpen it at a steeper angle. But in terms of its performance in the cut, it doesn't change at all. On a low angle plane, by contrast, with the bevel facing up, we can actually change the angle of our grind to change the performance of the plane. So for really tricky grain where you're getting a lot of tear out, a steeper grind will eliminate that problem. For softwoods or for end grain, a really shallow grind will increase the performance of the plane. Generally speaking, you're going to use some sort of median grind. And you can see on these two plane blades that I have for the low angle plane, how much we've used over the years this median grind compared to our specialty grind here. This is quite a bit shorter. This, by the way, represents uh, eight years of use with this plane blade. So you can see how long a single plane blade is actually going to last, and we use this plane every day. So this blade we have sharpened on its micro bevel to a much steeper angle, just in case we're dealing with trickier grain. But day to day, we tend to use this blade. Still, that possibility of changing the angle on your blade to change the performance of the plane itself adds to the versatility of low angle planes. And for that reason, if you're just starting out with hand planes, I recommend getting a low angle jack plane like this because you can use it for so many different tasks. It is incredibly versatile. It's great for smoothing, it's great for work on end grain, it's great for work on edge grain, and it's a really good shooting plane when you start to get into building your own shooting boards. We'll talk about that in a future episode as well. Additionally, I would recommend getting a low angle block plane. For work where you're having difficulty clamping the piece, or the piece is just really small, a low angle block plane is indispensable. After that, you can start adding high angle planes or additional low angle planes to your collection to add to your collection's capabilities. But to start out with, I would definitely go with the low angle plane. And this plane in particular is the one that I tend to grab more often than any other plane. There's something about the way that it feels in the hand and of course the size of the plane that really make it the workhorse in our shop. When you're buying hand planes, I recommend buying the highest quality hand planes that you can afford. You want thick blades. In the case of this block plane, the blade is actually 3 16 of an inch thick, which really helps to reduce chatter in the cut. On the case of this uh, high angle plane, the blade is about an eighth of an inch thick, but when combined with the chip breaker, it's over a quarter of an inch thick as an assembly, and uh, chatter really isn't an issue with these high angle planes. You'll also get precisely milled soles, so you don't have to lap your soles flat when you get them. And they're generally made of ductile cast iron, which is a very tough iron. So if you end up dropping the plane on the floor, usually you can pick it right up again and keep using it. One thing you definitely want to watch out for if you're buying a high angle plane is to make sure that the chip breaker and blade assembly come together perfectly along the width of the blade. If there's any gap between the chip breaker and the blade, you are guaranteed to get shavings stuck between the chip breaker and the blade during the cut. 
And when you do that, there's really not much you can do except for take the entire assembly apart, remove this thumb screw, take the offending shaving out, put it all back together again, readjust and start over. And that's a real pain. So if you do end up with a gap here on a plane that you've purchased, take the time to mill this chip breaker flat so that it meets up perfectly with the blade. And that will help to alleviate any chips getting caught between the two. Well, hopefully, this discussion on low angle planes and high angle planes will help you decide what hand planes you need in your shop. Subscribe if you like the videos and check us out at danielchafin.com.